Last time I looked at these ribbons. This time we're looking at these mids. I think they could be a great match. So we're gonna measure these and talk about them and add the files to the database. If you have any questions about them, leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. I bought these a while ago um, and I just haven't used them. So I don't actually have the original packaging. These are the original bags, but I don't have the original boxes. Um, so I can't comment on how well they were packaged and you know what kind of materials came with them. You can actually see the voice coil down in there. Uh, so I'm going to be careful with these. On the website these are listed as a full range, but I kind of... I've, I've dabbled with them a little bit already. I kind of consider them a mid-range. Here's some uh, shots of the motor and notice the inverted surround. Uh, it's just a beautiful driver really. Um, it's a neo magnet, uh, nice frame. Uh, for being so tiny and cute it's, it's really beefy. I needed to build a box. I went over this in the tweeter um, test and review so I'm not going to go too far into it. But uh, just showing you that this needed to be done. And here I am installing the driver in the test box. This driver is also very tight and friction fit. Not bad for a test box. I put the driver at the top of the cabinet when I'm measuring because the floor is always the earliest reflection. And there I take the first measurement and I get the um, on axis response of sample one. And um, the first thing that stands out to me here is this is really nice and flat. Aside from a little peak at 1500 hertz, uh, which we actually saw in the tweeter measurement too, so I'm starting to wonder if it's something about the box diffraction. Otherwise this thing is really ruler flat. Um, and uh, so, so far it's proving that it could be very usable and easy to design a crossover ramp. You can almost use uh, stock crossovers with this thing, which I'm adamantly against. <laughs> And I continued to take measurements and got this for sample two. It's a little more sensitive. Um, I was surprised by this. The response is similar, but it is more sensitive. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, and speaking of sensitivity, I should mention for a dedicated mid, and although this isn't classified as one, um, it doesn't have very good sensitivity at all. The efficiency is really bad. It's four ohm. Um, and we're sitting around 86, 87 dB at 4 ohm. That's a little bit unfortunate, especially since it doesn't actually have all that much more top end or bottom end extension for a dedicated mid. Uh, so that's one drawback of using this as a mid-range driver is you might want to think about using two. This is uh, showing both drivers back to back and you can see the sensitivity difference is not slight. Uh, this is a bit of a concern for me, and the Fountech tweeter had this also. Here we are at the off-axis response. Um, everything really checks out here. There's nothing much to complain about. Um, you can see the diffraction happening. Um, it's a bunching or gathering of the off-axis measurements right around, again, same as the tweeter, 2500, 3500 hertz. So the box edges are really having their, their, their time with the response there. The other thing to notice from these measurements is I got a pretty good idea where the cone breakup is happening and it's from about eight kilohertz and up. So this, this driver has potential for huge bandwidth. Again, it's you know listed as a full range so that shouldn't come as much of a surprise, but you can take this thing all the way up to eight kilohertz, although I would cross over and no higher than 4 kilohertz and all the way down to uh, 200 hertz. I should point out, I should have mentioned this earlier, I have an 11 millisecond gate on the measurements so these measurements are really only useful down to 200 hertz. Um, no less than 80, 80 or 90 hertz for sure. Um, but in any case this driver really, d despite that, this driver doesn't want to play um, nice below about 200 hertz. I would think a 400 hertz crossover would suit this driver very well. And once I finished up with the microphone, I switched over to the woofer tester and got some impedance measurements. And finally, we've got some consistency. <laughs> the, so um, we get great alignment from about 
two, three hundred hertz and up. Um, and the little uh, difference between the impedance peaks isn't going to play much of a real world um, problem for us. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that and I, I'd let that slide. Do download these files and try them out in XSIM like I'm about to do and ask me questions how that goes and before you know it, I'm going to actually be doing a project with these and you can follow along. So with that said, I brought up XSIM and uh, had a look at just how usable these were. The first thing I did was if I were to use these in a two-way with they would definitely need subwoofer support how easily do they low pass to match with a tweeter like the Fountech and I quickly could see that they did great this is very easy to find a good response um, so as I fiddled around here I could see a 2500 Hertz crossover was not a problem then I added a low pass uh, this proved to be a little more challenging and this is quite normal for all mid-ranges especially one with a big impedance peak right at 120-ish hertz like we have on this one. Uh, that's because that big impedance peak doesn't want to behave um, and play nicely with the high-pass filter. So I started adding this notch filter you can see. This uh, series LCR is you know another way to call it. And what that does is it basically kills that impedance peak so that the high-pass filter can do its job properly. So I did that and you know with these added parts I, I found that I was able to get a really nice uh, high pass response out of it too so I'm getting good bandwidth from between you know 400 hertz and 2500 hertz and I fooled around with an L pad a little bit not that this driver would need padding but just wanted to see if it would do anything. Well there you have it. I hope the measurements were useful. I hope you've learned a little bit more about this driver. Uh, link will be in the description where you can go to get the files to do crossover work on either of these drivers. Please stick around and you can see my tutorial on XSIM which will be coming eventually. Uh, it's a software you can use to uh, work out a crossover for these drivers or any other drivers I test in the future. If you haven't caught the video on this ribbon and you're watching this one about the mid wondering what this is all about, check out that video right here. You can click on the link to see that and don't forget to subscribe that'd be really helpful as well thanks